Rolling from, from the bag, bag to the bowl. Mm -hmm. Return mm -hmm. from the bowl back to the little bag. Mm -hmm. the bowl. Mm -hmm. What is the empty Empty, it takes the red cells that have, that have been finished being washed mm -hmm. and puts them up into this bag. Okay. So fill brings this to the bowl. Wash just cleans them off. And then empty puts it up here. I would tell you, most of your volume is sitting in the lower half, right, because it's wider. I would say somewhere about halfway, you're going to get a crit over 40, mm -hmm. right? Somewhere around half, halfway, you're going to, and I think that's a decent partial bowl. There was a time yeah. 30, 30 and up was the standard. Now everybody's looking at 50 and higher, right? Okay. But I would say if you're going to do a partial, it makes some sense if you're about halfway mm -hmm. up that bowl. And it's a little bit difficult inside that well. It's kind of tight in there. But if you give a good eye, you can see that layer, this red cell layer, right? It's a little thicker, you can you can recognize it. So if it's about halfway up that bowl, you're gonna get a you know fairly decent crit and something back. Plus, if you double wash, which we always recommend, so if you go into we wash with the leaner. So as we're doing that, again, if you came back over to the bowl, all that plasma that we pushed out. We're now just cleaning the red cell. The red cells are sticky, right? So if there's anything left on there, you just want to get rid of it. And we're, we're washing out into that bag plasma-free hemoglobin, laced cells, potassium, albumin, uh, uh, any debris, any you know uh, debris from the field. We're pushing that into the waste bag. So all you're giving back to the patient are red cells suspended in your plasma light. And that's going to be at a crit between 55 and 65 on average. And it all kind of depends on what comes in here, to be honest. But that's where we'll concentrate it to about 55 to 60, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. And I think the the real value to cell saver blood versus bank blood, number one is, if I were from for the patient standpoint, you have if this fresh, well, first of all, their own, right? Nothing nice. safer than your own. And you've got um, fresh blood, so it's got that 2,3 DPG, which is that oxygen carrying component, right? That's there. That's different from your bank units. Your bank units that you're getting, number one, $500 to $600 per unit. This is about $120 all in, and you can give unit after unit after unit on that 120, right? Like that's just, I'm guessing not that number, but it's not much higher than that. So that's what you're giving back to the patient. And then with bank units, expensive, um, the 2 3 DPG is depleted. Uh, very quickly, um, most of the time, your the, uh, the blood that's given back is between 14 and 21 days old, and that the 2-3 DPG has been depleted by then. That's there's a lot of papers that talk about. When you get questions like, "Can we bring this into the cell saver?" kind of questions, can we use this? Can we bring it in? The two absolute contraindications for cell saver are anything that clots the blood, right? Any thrombin based product, anything that lyses. So sterile water, uh, betadine, like just stuff that really shouldn't go in there. It shouldn't uh, go away cells. Those are your two absolutes. AABB has a list of relative con contraindications that, that's fairly extensive, but they all have, uh, all of those relative ones have some kind of um, indication as to how you can manage that, right? For instance, amniotic fluid, like if you were in an OB Use two suctions in the field, minimize your amniotic fluid, run your cell saver, and then when you get it back, use a specific kind of filter, looks like the filter, right? And all kinds of things. And, and, um, but I would always say, if, there, if there's ever a question in the OR just off the top of your head where they're like, hey, can I bring this into the cell saver? The question to anesthesia would be, is that product plasma bound? If it's plasma bound, we're washing it out. It's going to go into the waste bags. Everything plasma, plasma bound, goes into the waste bag. If it's if it binds to the red cells, then probably not. It's probably not what we're going to want to bring into the red cell, into the red cell cell. So that's an easy question back. When it's done washing and using this volume, it's going to empty up into the into this bag. So there's going to be a time in your, especially in your ortho cases, where they don't have a whole lot of volume that they lose. And at the end of the case, there might only be 500. And an anesthesia might say, can I, can I get that volume? You can always get the volume. So if you don't have enough to fill the bowl, you can, you can press fill to bring it in, and it's not going to do it automatically. 
you can always press fill, then it'll work automatically from there. So one of the two things is going to happen. Either you, when you press fill, it'll bring, it'll come in and it'll actually fill the bowl and empty automatically and you're done. Or it'll bring that volume down, it won't fill the bowl, it'll go into a fill paused state. And if you're not getting any more volume in here and anesthesia still wants it, then you would press wash and you'll get a you'll get something on screen that says you're about to do a partial bowl and then you'll prompt it from there. And I'll show you that. Right about now, we'll say purging red. And it's going to take that volume and send it back to here. And when it's done doing that, it'll purge the blue and send this over there. And then you're done. Better understanding of this thing? Because I know we're going to end up going over there and you guys Better understanding, the but there's no flipping way that I remember everything that you said. Yeah. <laughs> so I wouldn't be able to do it. Okay. But I've had I understand where mine is sometimes like it's about two or three hundred and it automatically starts washing. And that's just a setting thing that they've done to it that I don't see when I do it. Or I think I've been used both of them, right? It's supposed to be about six or eight hundred right before it starts. It's yeah, it's actually set at eight hundred, but it's remember it's a it's a um, it's a weight sensor. So oftentimes we look at it as a volume thing, but it's really weight. So three hundred is a little early, but I mean you could have five or six hundred in there and it can trip if it's a, if the crit is healthy, right? If it's fairly high, but if it's really dilute, sometimes it takes longer than the eight hundred that's built in there. And there they can create a setting. So here's your purging blue. They could create a setting. So I think that's what the CD setting is. And they've got it lower? Yeah. Okay, I can take a look at that. I don't know. I feel like that's what happened that day. In my waste bag, normally the heat Okay. But it depends, right? So if you could get, they might bring a whole bunch of like wash or uh, irrigation from the field mm -hmm. into this. So it might look like cooling. Like it could be very dilute. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, it's going to take longer, right? It makes yeah. sense. Um, there's a weight sensor in here mm -hmm. that's looking for. The default is 800 grams. One, one milliliter of a red cell is equivalent to one gram on average. So it just depends on what's in here once it reaches that 800 grams. Okay, okay. make sense? Um, so in here, it, it went from fill to wash, so I paused it just so you could see that. It automatically puts in the thousand, and then it'll just count up from zero to a thousand as it starts to use that volume. Okay, but it's, that's what's that's what's happening right now. So that's good. And this is a good spot for him, right down here. And, uh, in that, like, the ashtray. Ashtray. Oh, ashtray. Dumb Go ahead. One day I went in to help <laughs> troubleshoot somebody, and it wasn't automatically, and I think it had gone from the, is there an auto mode versus a manual mode? So whenever no. it fills up, it automatically knows to start the process. What happened that day that I'm trying to remember? Does that make sense? So you should always be in an automatic mode. This default has nothing but auto mode. Okay, right. somehow it gone to the manual mode, so it wasn't automatically populating for it to go to start. So, it's thing. How does that happen? So we talked about this maybe in the class before that maybe perfusion yeah. put it into their Take setting, into the C V setting. Uh -huh. And I believe if you go in there, they have a manual mode there. Okay. It takes, it, you default. always want to be in people. Okay. So always check that when you get to the machine. If it says C V on it, just change it. Just have a file on this. And I'm not just saying it because I'm a hemonetic guy. I will try to stay as very neutral as a clinical with all the devices that are out in the market, their profile for washout is just superior to the rest. They do a great job. The wash bag does not have a timer. Right? No. No. Wash bag has a timer. Okay. No. The wash bag is just the wash bag, right? You guys use plasma light here. And you can use normal saline mm -hmm. if you ever have an issue with that. Um, and Normasol R is another alternative. If you ever ran into any kind of issues, the saline is always the, the product of choice. Plasma light is pretty much saline with some electrolytes in it, right? And then Norsal R is another choice should that would be like the third one in line if you have to but all safe to use for washing. Um, but yeah, the only bag that's got half rinse one is going to be sitting up here connected to the suction line in the field. Okay. So that plasma light that we hang, we're heparinizing it. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Thirty thousand units per liter. If you've got a surgeon that wants more, I've had surgeons that have asked for 40, I've had surgeons that have asked for 50, still safe. You 
linear residual heparin at the end, uh, at the end doesn't have enough heparin.